Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kelly Beard, Content Specialist for Maryland Realtors, and I want to welcome you all to your Home Buying Keys webinar. Assembled tonight, we have experts in the industry. With us is our very own Director of Advocacy and Public Policy, Lisa May, Frank Bamande and Katherine Kramer-Dale from Maryland Housing and Community Development, Jim Hall from Freddie Mac, our local realtor, Danielle Dixon with Century 21 New Millennium, and our lender, Malcolm Hollensteiner from Sandy Spring Bank. Tonight, you will get an abundance of information to help you navigate and succeed in your home buying journey. This webinar will be recorded and sent out to all attendees after the conclusion of the webinar. We encourage your questions and we look forward to answering them. Please post all your questions in the Q&A box below at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And with that, I will turn it over to our Director of Advocacy and Public Policy, Lisa May. Lisa, take it away. Kelly, thank you so much. It is a beautiful evening here in Maryland, and we that's why we are so thankful that you are choosing to spend it with us. We know that this means you're really serious about becoming a homeowner, uh, and we love that. So we want to give you all of the information that you need to take that next step on your home ownership journey. Uh, so as Kelly described, we have a lot of local experts um, here to give you information, to answer your questions. Um, so please don't be shy, send those in, um, in our chat and in our Q and A, and we'll get those in front of our experts so that you get the information that you need and that is specific to your situation. So I'm gonna get right to it um, with our local realtor, Danielle Dixon. Um, she is the branch operation manager for Century 21 New Millennium based in Aberdeen, Maryland, and is also a member of uh, Maryland Realtors Housing Opportunities Committee. So um, Danielle, let's, let's jump right in. Awesome, thank you so much. I will begin to share my screen with this uh, presentation. Just give me a second while I get this up. Hello everyone, yes, I am Danielle Dixon. She said it already, Branch Operations Manager at Century 21 New Millennium. I'm located in Aberdeen. I serve as Baltimore, Hartford County, Cecil and Kent counties as well, but not limited to other counties like Prince George's if I have a client that needs servicing down there as well. To learn a little tidbit about me, I am family oriented. I have a big family, four children, a wonderful husband, and I have some fun facts. I love reading, teaching my dance students, and spending time in my local church, helping my local community. Um, I have some specializations, and you'll get the slide. You'll be able to read it, and if you have any questions, you can contact me. Are you ready? Home buying can be a very scary process, but once you're ready, um, once you're ready, you'll understand that this is a, a big financial decision. It's emotional, and yes, sometimes stressful process for hometown buyers. When I first bought my home, my husband and I, was looking for years until we were ready. Ready means that you we have a great credit score. Every lender is different. Your debt is manageable, which means that when you contact a lender and or realtor, you can go over your credit um, report to see what kind of debts do you have and what to pay down. Um, if you have money saved up for a down payment or closing costs, your lender can actually help you with that information financially. And also too, Hmm, you're ready when you got that golden ticket, which is that pre-approval letter by the lender. So I have five home buying keys. It's five little points that we're just going to go over. I'm not going to be long. So we have tons of grant programs. I know you guys are like, wow, I didn't know it was so much. This is only like a small list. It's actually more. We got the Maryland Mortgage Program. You got the HUD Program. Harbor Housing Program, Habitat for Humanity, and so on and so forth. Um, get with your lender, get with a real estate agent or your, um, or your county um, programs to see what you can qualify for. A lot of the programs you have to take classes for, but they'll step you through the process so that way you are able to put their money um, on the house for closing costs. 
Next, we have here benefits of hiring me, a realtor. What you want to do first is you want to meet with a realtor. And sometimes you may meet with several and you want to interview them to see what all um, what they offer, what brokerage that they um, are from, what kind of benefits that they have. So I'm going to read some of the benefits right now that what we do provide. We have market knowledge. So what area that you want to live in, we can provide how many houses on the market within your price range. Um, um, the interest rate, which is the lenders are will help with that as well. Um, the buyers in the market and all that good stuff for as market knowledge. We have guidance through the process. This process is very emotional, but we'll help you hand in hand throughout the whole process. Um, we have access to listings. So what we do is we will send you listings within your um, your pre-approval amount. And your lender will talk to you about the pre-approval amount and how much of a house that you can afford. We will negotiate on your behalf. Um, negotiations as far as repairs, negotiations on the price, and, and, and even more. We got legal expertise with contracts. So your real estate agent will um, have contracts ready for you to sign and go through each page so that way you can truly understand. And then we have, yes, that emotional support. A lot of times you will be stressed out. I know I was. Um, you get emotional about the process and you have to, you know, prepare to move. Then you got inspections and all that good stuff. And a lot of times we become your therapist to help you through that process. Your home search. Yeah, you got a pre-approval letter, so you're ready to buy. And now you want to find your perfect home. Here's how we can help. Once you have a pre-approval letter. Send your list. We will send your listings with your criteria. It could be a four bedroom home, two bathrooms, a garage. It could be I don't want to see homes, nothing above four hundred thousand dollars or even two hundred thousand dollars. What I would do is set up showings to see your favorite homes out of the 10 homes. You just favored it, maybe three or four. And then you want to make your decision from there. So what we do is we're scheduled showing so that way you can pick the house that you would like to buy. And then what we do after that is to submit an offer. Once your offer is submitted, there is a long process. I'm going to say it right here, but once you buy a house, you may forget. But I'm gonna give, this slide will be given to you so that way you can see the process. And when you contact your realtor, they're going to step you through the process as well. You really don't have to memorize this, but just know that there was a process from the beginning to the very end. Number one, with the offer being submitted, now you're under contract once they approve it, okay? They say, yay, we accept your offer. The first thing you need to do is have a home inspection. The home inspection is very important. For all my clients, that's the number one priority thing that we do for a house. Because you don't want to buy a house, and once you move in, the furnace goes out, the front door falls off, the electrical just, I don't know, just starts sparking all over the house. But the home inspector go detailed throughout the whole house and give you a report. And then we sent this report as well as some repairs, if it's any, to the seller uh, so we can negotiate repairs. Then we have the loan and underwriting process. That's when you submit all of your financials, um, statements, and your documents, and they go through underwriting. So I'm not the lender. And um, they do their process. You will have to talk to your lender about that. We have the title company involved. They want to make sure that the title is free and clear before you buy it. There's any liens against the property. So they help too with making sure this is a smooth process. We have the appraisals. That's very important. You don't want to buy a house for $500,000 and it's actually worth $300,000 because the mortgage company would not give you that amount. They'll give you $300,000 what it's appraised for. Then meanwhile, you have to do the preparations to relocate. You need the moving company. You got to buy boxes. You got to get the electricity switch in your name. You got, um, it could be the oil company. It's a lot to do when you go to settlement. And then you have the final walkthrough. Then yeah, what's the final walkthrough? Well, right before you um, settle or go to closing, you want to make sure when you walk through the house, it's free and clear. Everything is nice and clean. Every, all the furniture has been removed. And also to see if there's any defects in, in, on the property. So the final walkthrough, I or another relative will walk you through the property to make sure it is A-OK. -okay. Now settlement. 
this is where you're excited and sometimes nervous at the same time, but it's like thumbs up for everybody. The title company gives you a thumbs up. The loan officer gives you a thumbs up. And all you got to do, just like this gentleman and his two people sit down and then you sign a whole bunch of paperwork. There will be a scheduled time and date. It will be conducted by your title company or attorney. We will review, sign documents. There will be a payment of closing costs, transfer of funds, title transfer and recordation and celebration. You got the keys. Oh, thank you for listening to this presentation of mine. If you have any questions, please ask now. Or if you shy to ask now, you can always email me or contact me. Thank you. Danielle, thank you so much. That was a wonderful um, overview of everything, um, which is a, a really long and complicated process. Um, and for anyone who does have questions, you know, please use our Q&A box down below, but I'll kick it off. You know, you mentioned the importance of working with a realtor and with, you know, talking to maybe several realtors to find the one that's right for you. But you know, there are, you know, about 30,000 realtors in Maryland. So how do you yes. go about, uh, you know, what selection criteria should you use? And how do you really find the one that's right for you in that process? Sometimes it could just be the personality of the realtor. Um, can they keep their word? <laughs> are they punctual? Um, also to a real estate agent, what do they offer? Do they offer presentations, a, a, a buyer presentation, um, a list of other services that they provide outside of everyone else? You want to see out of everyone who provide the most, who who's going to um, comfort me and got me through this process. You'll have a knowing in the inside that that person is right for you. Great. Yeah, I know. I remember I'm, I I was a little, you know, type A. So I'm like, I, I wanted my my realtor to contact me all of the time, but that might stress <laughs> other people out. I don't know. Um, so yes, I think I think your uh, your point about personality is an important one. Uh, yeah. But you also mentioned the importance of a home inspection. And I know with the market that we've had over the past couple of years, you know, there was there was all of this talk about, oh, in order to be competitive in in multiple offer situations, I have to waive all these inspections and I have to waive my financing contingency and my appraisal and and I can't have a home inspection. Otherwise, somebody else is going to get that home. Are you seeing offers, you know, with inspection contingencies accepted in the market today? Yes. Back in 2020, 2021, it was crazy. But a lot of those people who waived their home inspection um, contingency and the financial regretted it. Now the house isn't as worth as much like it was. And they have a ton of repairs. I have um, a story of this one client, it's not mine because I require that. Um, their roof was leaking because <laughs> they needed a new roof or just to get that house. But I would like to tell the buyers, don't be pressured to put in an offer. You wanna be ready, you wanna be sure. So um, yeah, I do agree. Like now, it's not that it's not crazy like it was before. So you may see, it could be a multiple offer um, situation, but not like it was during COVID, 20 offers on the house and I experienced that. Yeah, and- But always get a home inspection, always. Absolutely. With with an investment that big, you want to make yes. sure it's sound, right? And you, you mentioned want to your house. Yeah. And you yeah. mentioned you pressure, Danielle. I I don't know. There's something about the home buying process that just brings out everyone's opinions on, you know, the house you should buy or where you should look, you know, family, friends, coworkers, neighbors, somehow at like everyone has an opinion about the house you're gonna buy. How do you help your buyers kind of cut through all of that noise and get to what they want out of this process? You know what? I realized that they have to make their choice to close the door on the other, other voices. Um, I had a client who had their grandmom, mom, and grandpa in the process. And um, it caused the client not to buy a house. 
And I let her know, you got to close the door. You have to buy a house because you want to. You have to um, want a house because that's something you want to buy. That's your finances and your uh, that's going to be your asset. So for me, I can only encourage, but ultimately they have that decision. If they make that decision to have everybody and 50 other family members, that's on them. And it possibly could be a headache. But all I could do is encourage them. If I'm working with a husband and wife, that's who I'm working with. If your name is not on the documentation, I do not talk to you. So that's how I do things. Like, I'm sorry, but these are my, my clients and not you. Great to have somebody in your corner while you're, while you are doing this and while you're going through this process. Well, listen, Danielle's going to stick around with us um, for the rest of the session. So if you think of anything um, later on um, that you think a realtor needs to answer, Danielle's going to be here. Just put that in our Q&A. But for now, um, we are going to turn it over to Malcolm, um, who is head of production with Sandy Spring Bank in uh, Bethesda, Maryland. And Malcolm, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Um, what can you tell us about getting a mortgage in today's market? Well, it's a good, good evening. And let me uh, see if I can share. Hopefully, uh, uh, you can see my screen. I'm, I'm, I'm simple, low tech, just one one uh, one page slide for you. So, good evening. Um, I run the, the mortgage division for Sandy Spring Bank, and you know we help uh, thousands of Maryland homeowners, thousands of Maryland residents become homeowners every year. You know, it's all about creating that thumbs up day. So. Um, Danielle did a great job talking about uh, her job as an agent and the process and how important it is to work with a, a prof professional agent. Um, same thing on the, on the, the mortgage side. Um, you know, obtaining financing can be a very stressful um, and challenging experience for, for certain borrowers. Um, no two borrowers are the same. So, uh, when you approach the home buying process and particularly the financing side of it, uh, it's all about being patient and understanding it's a process and uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Because every lender that you encounter is, is um, concerned about not only you qualifying for your mortgage, but also you're staying in your house. And, you know, lenders today are, are very focused on sustainable home ownership, which is really simply, you know, making sure that uh, a homeowner is set up with a financing option that makes sense for them, that takes into consideration their current situation and possibly future situations as well. So, you know, spending time with lenders and, and getting to understand the different programs and the different options is, is very important. You know, there are so many loan programs out there that, um, you know, we could talk for hours and still not get through half of the loan programs that everyone on this uh, panel um, and every attendee might qualify for. Uh, you're going to hear from, from Catherine Kramer Dale from the, the Maryland Mortgage Program later. And, you know, the MMP program is one of the greatest mortgage programs in the country for first time buyers. Um, and we're very, uh, Sandy Spring Bank, we're very proud to be one of the leading lenders in the MMP program. And, and what the MMP program can do for first time home buyers in particular is really special. And I'll let Catherine go into that. So what I want to talk tonight quickly about is what I would call the four C's of, of obtaining a mortgage. So this is not rocket science. This is really the four key characteristics that every prospective homeowner that is financing a property uh, needs to show uh, or needs to have qual be examined by a lender. So the four C's simply are credit, capacity, cash, and collateral. I'm going to talk about three of the C's because the fourth C collateral is quite honestly a characteristic that you as a prospective homeowner have no control over, and that is the property appraisal report. So whenever you obtain financing uh, for a house or condominium, co-op, et cetera, your lender is going to order an appraisal to um, justify that the value of, of the property is, is worth what you're paying for. 
And so you have no control at all over the appraisal. You're charged for the appraisal, but you're not involved with the selection of the appraiser. You're not involved with helping the appraiser complete the report. Um, so you're really removed from that process. So we'll talk about credit capacity and cash. And your credit obviously is your credit score. And you know, obtaining financing credit is it plays a very large role in that. Um, most consumers today are fortunate that if they have a banking relationship or a credit card relationship, um, very often that lender uh, who provides that service to the, the consumer will also provide a complimentary credit, credit score um, on monthly statements. Um, or you might have signed up for one of the various free credit report opportunities that are available. One thing I would caution is when you look at some of the your bank statements or credit card statements and it has a credit score, that very often is what's called a consumer credit score. And it's not a mortgage credit score. So when a mortgage lender like Sandy Spring Bank pulls your credit report, we order a credit report that contains mortgage credit scores. The credit scores that you very often might have access to are consumer credit scores. And there are some inconsistencies with those scores. Very often we in the mortgage industry see that a consumer credit score could be anywhere from 30 to 50 points higher than a mortgage credit score. So if you see that you have a 650 credit score, it could be lower than that on a mortgage score. So just be careful when you look at your those those free credit scores that are provided to you that um, it's a great way to, to track your credit, particularly if you're working on improving your credit, but it's not the end all score that your lender will pull uh, to determine um, the designated score and what loan programs you may or may not be eligible for. So in terms of credit, you know, what's the single best way to have good credit? pay your obligations on time. Um, so if you if you make your pay, credit payments on time, um, if you also uh, are a, um, a conservative user of credit, and which means you have credit cards, um, but you're not maxed out on your credit cards, that helps you build a strong credit profile. So um, hopefully, since you're on this uh, call tonight, you're focused on becoming a homeowner and you're on that journey. So you probably have already taken steps to, to look at your credit and to track your and to monitor your credit. So that's an important thing to continue to do while you go through the process. Um, Danielle made some good points about getting pre-approved um, where you obtain a commitment from a lender prior to writing a contract to buy a property. What I would caution you is that when you get pre-approved in today's market, because inventory of homes is so limited, it might take longer than 90 or 120 days after you've been pre-approved to find your property. So what that means is that your lender could require you to provide updated bank statements, pay stubs, and even pull a new credit report to continue your pre-approval. So whether you're searching for a property um, uh, and you're pre-approved or from the, or you've pre-approved and you found a property, that doesn't mean it's time to kind of go wild with your credit. You gotta continue to maintain a good credit record because lenders monitor your credit up through the day that you go to settlement. So if from the time you, uh, have written a contract on a property and you're pre-approved to the time you go to settlement. If you go out and, you know, buy a new car or if you get a new credit card or you miss payments, that's going to trigger uh, an alarm for the lender. And that could cause some serious implications on your ability to qualify. So with credit, always make sure that you have good credit it's it's uh, it's a 24 7 responsibility if you've had credit problems in the past don't worry about it you can reestablish your credit uh, work with your lender 
have very honest conversations. If you've had some credit glitches as to what you might need to do to overcome those glitches, you'd be surprised in that very few people in this country have a perfect credit history. Um, so if you've had some credit bumps in the past, that doesn't mean you're disqualified from purchasing a home. It's just a question of working with good lenders who can help provide the counsel that you need to, to get through some of those challenges. So moving on from credit, let's go to the second C, capacity. What is capacity? Capacity is simply your ability to qualify for a mortgage payment in conjunction or in combination with your other debts and liabilities. So when a lender looks at capacity, they calculate something called a debt to income ratio. And every loan program has different debt to income or DTI requirements. And a DTI, the, the calculation is, is simply what the total mortgage or housing payment is going to be, which includes the principal and interest that you pay every month to repay the mortgage, along with one twelfth of any pro annual property tax, insurance, or condominium fee or homeowners association fee. So the principal and interest, one twelfth of the property tax bill, one twelfth of the homeowners insurance renewal, and then any condominium, co-op, or homeowners association fee that goes into the total monthly housing payment for that your lender utilizes. Then your lender will take a look at your credit report, and they'll take a look at what your minimum payments are on the credit report. That could include a car loan, a car lease. It could include credit cards, student loans, personal loans, et cetera. If you have alimony or child support payments, that also will go into your debt to income ratio. Um, those payments then, the debt to income ratio is then factored. We, we, fact, we take a look at what your gross income is if you're a salaried individual or if you're a self-employed individual or a business owner, we look at your net income. But, we, but, but between gross and net income, depending on your income and employment situation, we then calculate debt to income ratio in conjunction with what your, your payments are. The one piece of advice I'd give you when you look at your housing payment is that your mortgage lender looks at, as I said, principal and interest, taxes, insurances, and any condominium or co-op or homeowners association fees. Um, you will have other fees every month as a homeowner, including utilities. Those are not factored into the, the housing payment from our perspective, but you have to pay utilities. You have to pay all those other fees. So when you're looking at a budget and when you're looking at what's a comfortable monthly payment for you to make, you need to factor in utilities and some of those other fees that you have to pay, but that the lender doesn't include. So that's capacity. Um, and yeah, as I said, every loan program, including the Maryland Mortgage Program, has specific debt to income requirements, which your lender will be happy to review with you. The third C that I want to talk about tonight is cash. And that is, you know, how much money do you need to complete this transaction between down payment and closing costs? Uh, where is that money coming from? And how can you properly document those funds to your lender? So we talk about cash to close, and that is how much money do you need to bring to this closing table so you can celebrate that thumbs up experience as Danielle mentioned. Typically, when you purchase a property, you will make an earnest money deposit, which is basically a down payment or a an initial deposit on the property. So the lender will need to verify that earnest money deposit check that you've made, make sure that it's paid, that it's cleared your account. And then what's left over will be from the earnest money deposit will be your cash to close. Now, there are a tremendous number of great programs throughout Maryland at the county, city, state level that helps prospective homeowners with down payment and closing cost assistance. And there, here again, we could be we could do another call for that could be at least five hours at minimum that talked about all the great programs for down payment and closing cost assistance in Maryland. So 
as first time, if you're a first time buyer, you you possibly could be eligible for a lot of those programs. That will help reduce the amount of cash that you bring to closing. But regardless of how much or how much or how little amount of money you need to bring to closing, the lender has to verify where your source of funds is coming from. Is it coming from your own funds? Is it coming from a gift from a family member? Or is it coming from a down payment assistance? So that's very important that you are able to explain to your lender all the deposits going into your bank account. Because if you have deposits going into your bank account that are not standard uh, paycheck deposits, the lender might ask for verification as to where, who, where those funds are coming from. Because lenders have to make sure that you have not gone out and you have not taken out a credit card loan or a personal loan for your down payment, because that in most cases is not allowed. That's not an acceptable practice. So if you need down payment assistance, don't go out and, and take a cash advance on your credit card or take out a personal loan. You typically can only have use secured, uh, have a secured loan for down payment. So you could borrow against a 401k or you could borrow against your car, but that has to be properly documented. So whatever you do, make sure you review with your lender if you have any funds for down payment and closing that are coming from outside of your paycheck, because that paper trail can get very complicated and, and painful if not everything is documented properly. And that's really the key, the, the key to having a successful experience when obtaining financing is that you make sure that you're able to explain everything that the lender asks for. And lenders are very patient and they understand how challenging and, and, and troublesome sometimes this process can be, but just work with your lender and be patient and understand that it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, but when you get to the finish line and you have that thumbs up experience, it's pretty special. So Lisa, that's, um, that's, that's all I have to say. Fantastic. Well, you, you put a lot into that one slide, Malcolm. So thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. Um, you know, one question that we've received in the past, and I, I think it's an important one, you know, now in our economy, we have a lot of people who are self-employed or, you know, part of the gig economy, they're not getting a regular paycheck every two weeks, maybe their income fluctuates some, you know, seasonally or something. How do they go about, you know, showing their income and getting pre-approved or approved um, for a mortgage loan? That's a great question, Lisa. Thank you for asking. So um, when you have, um, you know, a side hustle um, or you're part of the gig economy, um, it really depends on whether you are paid uh, W-2 wages or whether you're paid 1099 wages as an independent contractor. So anytime you ha are, have income that is uh, independent contractor income, that is considered self-employment income. And lenders need to see tax returns to properly document and validate that income. So if you don't have the income on the tax return and it's not on your W-2 as a salary, and, you know, if it's cash income, that's typically income that you cannot use. Now, most organizations like Uber in particular, Amazon, if you're working part-time jobs for them, you know, they'll have the proper income paper trail documentation. Um, and obviously, if it's if it's independent contracting income, it has to be on the tax returns to be used. Very often, depending on where you are in the course of the year, you'll have to provide not only tax returns, but also a year to date profit and loss, which is simply you know, how much income have you received from that employment source and what are your expenses going out? Um, you know, being a self-employed borrower, um, 
is a different process than a salaried borrower because very often the IRS tax code allows self-employed borrowers to reduce their taxable income by writing off business expenses. And sometimes borrowers who have uh, aggressive tax preparers uh, can find that they've written off too much of their income because now they don't have very much qualifying income. So if you're self-employed, whether it's your primary source of income or it's a secondary source of income that you need to qualify for a mortgage with, talk to your lender very early in the process because self, you know, no two borrowers are alike, particularly when it comes to self-employment income. Great. Thank you. And we're getting a little short on time, but I feel like we, we really do have to address what is usually the elephant in the room, interest rates, right? My goodness, you cannot watch a news story about the housing market the past couple of years without talking about interest rates and where they're going and are, are they high? Are they coming back down? What are they? You know, Malcolm, you've been in, in the business. You've seen a lot of different real estate markets. Straight talk on interest rates. What do people really need to know about them right now? Yeah. So so straight out, historically, interest rates are still at a very attractive level. Um, you know, interest rates are six and a half to seven percent. They've gone up a little bit this week, but historically, they're very attractive. Um, I do not see interest rates moving down the in 2024. I think we will see rates drop, mortgage rates drop in 2025. I think 2024 will be a very static interest rate environment. Rates could go up or down an eighth or a quarter of a percent, depending on what's happening internationally and within the financial markets. Um, there still are, they still are historically very low. And if you buy a house this year and finance it, you could always have the opportunity to refinance when rates drop. So, um, you know, and the other thing to, to consider too is depending on, on your circumstance, you might qualify for uh, some interest rate deductions. Um, and that's something that we've forgotten about because when interest rates were at two and a half percent, no one had an interest rate, an interest rate, interest write off on their mortgage. Um, so rates move every day. You can't control interest rates and you can't beat interest rates. There's no such thing as timing interest rates perfectly. It's all about being comfortable with your monthly payment. That's the key. If you're, if you're, if you're comfortable with a monthly, monthly mortgage payment at 7%, then you'll be a lot more comfortable if rates drop to five and a half percent in two years, which I think they will. But it's all about being comfortable with what the payment is today. Great. Little truth bomb just dropped right here in the middle of the presentation. Malcolm, thank you You're so thank much you. again. Uh, Malcolm's going to be here. Danielle's still here. If you guys think of questions, um, the Q&A is open as long as we are here. But right now, I'm going to turn it to Jim Hall with Freddie Mac. Malcolm talked a lot about the importance of credit, and I think Jim is going to pick right up where he left off on that important topic. <laughs> so, Jim, thanks for being here, and the floor is yours. Uh, Lisa, you're very welcome, and as always, I commend you and Maryland Realtors for providing this great service for the people in Maryland. I mean, you're pulling together, you know, subject matter experts like Danielle, Malcolm, and, and Catherine to you know, share their, you know, wisdom, you know, with the people of Maryland. And I, I, I you know, I wish other states throughout the uh, the country were doing this. So uh, again, my hat's off to you. So, um, well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Jim Hall. I'm an affordable lending manager with Freddie Mac. And Freddie Mac um, is a mortgage company. Uh, we were chartered and created by Congress in 1970 to work in the secondary mortgage market. So what does that mean? Okay, it means that we don't lend money directly to the public. So I am not in competition with Malcolm. Um, Malcolm is your man um, to take your mortgage application and get you approved. 
Um, the secondary mortgage market, we we work as an investor. So we prov provide liquidity in the market. So what we do is we buy the mortgages that uh, Sandy Spring originates and that the Maryland Mortgage Program um, writes also. And then we bundle them into large investments. So uh, so if you're wondering why there's two mortgage companies on this <laughs> webinar, um, Malcolm and I aren't jousting it out for, uh, for business. So uh, we all work hand in hand um, in this industry. Um, you know, it takes a village to really uh, get you to, you know, buy the proper house that uh, that meets your needs and to get you approved for the uh, the proper mortgage that uh, you have the capacity to repay. So, so Freddie Mac, um, I can assure you, is not a person, and I've gotten that question before. Um, we are a government-sponsored enterprise, and we're multifaceted. We have a single-family division, which I'm part of, and that's for one to four unit properties. Uh, we have a multi-family division, which is five units and above, and our all-important capital markets division, which controls our money, and then that allows us to buy mortgages, as I mentioned, from uh, from mortgage companies. Uh, we have multiple mortgage products. I'm not going to do a deep dive into our products. Um, Malcolm covered, you know, really a, a good overview of, uh, you know, what a mortgage is. Um, but our affordable programs are 3% down programs. So lenders use those programs because they it's the best deal, you know, in the marketplace for a consumer if you qualify for it. It's better than an FHA loan, which requires three and a half percent down. So um, we do have a, a specialized mortgage product called HFA Advantage, and it's for lenders to use specifically through a housing finance agency like the Maryland DHCD and their Maryland mortgage program. So Catherine will do a you know, I'm, like I said, a deeper dive into that because um, I don't want to, uh, you know, take her time and, and go over the program and ha have you hear it twice. But I do want to stress that one of the main pillars here at Freddie Mac is education. And it's really, really important, you know, for you, the consumer, to become educated on the home buying process and the mortgage application process because that gives you more power. And realtors and mortgage companies, they are fiduciaries for you. And that means, that, okay, you come to them and you put your trust in their hands that they are going to do the best job for you and, and provide the, the most affordable home, again, that meets your needs and qualify you for the most affordable loan program that, you know, also it costs less for you as far as fees and price and qualifies you for the best interest rate. Because Malcolm, like Malcolm said, it's really about your capacity, that payment, what, what you can afford each month. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen here um, and go over our educational tool that we have here at Freddie Mac. It's called Credit Smart. So let me find uh, my slides here. Here we go. And Lisa, if you can give me a thumbs up as far as if you can see it or not. You're great. Okay, fabulous. So if anything, you know, coming here tonight, you will be able to um, take this tool away and it won't cost you a penny. This is... Freddie Mac's financial education tool for consumers that will really teach you the whole process. And Lisa and Marilyn Realtors are going to provide you with these slides. But if you want to uh, jot down the, um, the web address, it's in the bottom right hand corner. And this has been around for 20 years. OK, it's very interactive. It's multilingual. And it really, really will help you, you know, better understand what homeownership is about. So what we have is broken into two sides, the financial capability side and the homeownership education side. So the essentials piece is really like the Encyclopedia Britannica of homeownership. And the homeownership education side is the immediate side 
for you going through a you know the buying process with Danielle and then the mortgage application process with Malcolm. We enhanced the program um, within the last two years to make it more tech friendly. So the essential side allows you to build your own dashboard and you can see a copy of it on the screen here and you'll be able to track your own progress, earn badges, set your own goals, set a notebook. Um, again, there's videos, it's self-paced. So this isn't something that, you know, you have to sit down and go through in, in one evening. Um, actually, the essentials part is something that you want to keep for your whole homeownership journey because it's going to help you to set goals, um, teach you, you know, the importance of earning and then spending, being a savvy borrower, planning to save, and prepare and protect. And you can see how many modules we have um, in, in each section. I mean, preparing and protecting your asset is critical. Um, because here at Freddie, one of our community missions is preventing foreclosures because it is exciting to buy that house. It's exciting to get, get that mortgage approved. But there's so much more to being a homeowner as far as you know, furnishing the home and buying everything you need to take care of your property and your yard. Um, so this is probably the biggest financial decision you're going to make in your lifetime. So we want you to really, really understand that and really, you know, do what you can to make sure that you are protecting your asset because it is your asset. And also planning to save is very, very important because things happen. And, you know, I bought my first house with my wife 34 years ago, and I can remember my dad telling me, Jim, you know, you need a rainy day fund. And I'm like, well, what is that, dad? What's a rainy day fund? And he, he's like, well, you know, you're going to be a homeowner. Things are going to happen and you're going to need some cash to, you know, if you have an emergency. And um, I was like, OK, well, what can happen? He goes, well, you know, anything really. And then, you know, two years into my home ownership, my wife and I, we came home one evening, you know, from work and we went down the basement and the water heater went and it flooded our basement and we had a mess on our hands. But thankfully, I did listen to my father had some cash, was able to clean up the mess uh, while I put in my insurance claim. Um, and, um, you know, it worked out. So that's just an example of, uh, you know, really planning on, you know, savings because, you know, things do happen. Now, the home buyer use side, okay, like I mentioned, this is for the immediate side. Uh, this is only six modules. It takes you through the home buying process and the mortgage application process. And again, it's self-paced, it's available in English and Spanish, and you have to pass a test at the end of these six modules and achieve 80% or higher. And once you pass that test, you get a completion certificate, which is good for 12 months, and it meets national industry standards for home ownership education and counseling. So with that, that gives you power in your hand and your your realtor and your loan originator at the mortgage company are going to know that you're serious you know you want to buy that house you want to get that mortgage approved and you've learned about it so you know so you go for it so again credit smart doesn't cost you anything this is free from freddie mac and hopefully you'll see value in it and you'll utilize it so please, um, you know, you know, again, you know, take it, take the test. Don't be nervous. And um, and if you have other friends or relatives who are going through the home buying process, turn them on to Credit Smart because knowledge is power and it will only help you out, you know, through the process. So. Any questions, Lisa, from uh, our Well, audience? I did have one just to confirm what that web address is where you can find all of the information about Credit Smart. Okay. And uh, it is, uh, if you just Google Freddie Mac and Credit Smart, it will take you right to it. But the address again, and I'm having an issue here on my slides. Oh, let me see if I can pull it up. I just yep. Googled it and it looks like it is creditsmart.freddymac.com. 
Yeah, okay. But never fear, we will be sending out all of Jim's slides and all of our other presenter slides. So you should have that in your email inbox um, very soon. All right, so, great. Jim, thank you. Oh, um, thank, and now thank you for as our, always. Yes, uh, so good to see you. For our final presenter of the night, I'm going to hand it over to Catherine Kramer Dale from the Maryland Mortgage Program. And let me tell you, these are fantastic loan products that are only for Marylanders and no one else. So, Catherine, please tell us about them. Get away. Okay. So, hi, everybody. My name is Catherine Kramer Dale, and I'm with the State of Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. And you have just experienced something that is amazing. You have Maryland Realtors with one of their top performing agents that's gonna be able to guide you in helping you find that dream home. You've got one of our top performing lenders in the entire state of Maryland, Sandy Spring Bank, who is gonna help you determine that you qualify for that home that you'd like to make sure that you can qualify for it. And then also be able to look at all the different programs that are available through the state to help you with any funds that you need. Then you had Freddie Mac, Jim Hall on there. He's telling you about how important education is, making sure this is the largest investment that you'll ever make. Now I'm on here. I only have about, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, but I can do it. This is our website. It's www.mmp Maryland Mortgage Program at Maryland, M A R Y L A N D dot gov. So www.mmp.maryland, M A R Y L A N D dot gov. When you're on this website, this is what the home page looks like. Here's maroon color row homes. You're going to scroll down and you can actually click on here to talk to a lender. We're kind of like Jim in a way as Freddie Mac. We don't lend directly to the borrower. You're not going to actually apply directly with me or a Maryland mortgage program. You're going to go to Malcolm, one of our top performing lenders. He's got loan officers all over the state of Maryland. They're going to do all the amazing things that Malcolm said to determine that you qualify for this house that you'd like to purchase. What you do with us is you let Malcolm and his amazing staff know that you're interested in the Maryland Mortgage Program. When I scroll over to the right and click on Professional Portal, and I scroll down and I pass the yellow box and I see a man with a pair of glasses, I'm gonna click on Program Information. You can go right here to Interest Rates if you want to, and I'm gonna show you all the products that we offer. You're gonna open up the printable rate sheet. We have products where you don't have to be a first time home buyer. You can't own anything anywhere in the world at the time of this closing, because this house that you're buying with the Maryland Mortgage Program funds has to be your primary residence. You can't rent it out and use it as an investment property. If you have a loan with us, it has to be your primary residence. So when you're doing a loan with the Maryland Mortgage Program, you can't own any other properties anywhere in the world at the time of this closing so that we make sure that you're going to live in this house. But you don't have to be a first time home buyer. You could be a repeat buyer. And there's three products that our lenders will show you you could qualify for. They're called the flex programs. The first time advantage products, their rates are lower on their first time advantage. And there's far more selection of products that you can choose from. They're lower because you have to be a first time home buyer. How am I a first time home buyer? Somebody who's never owned a home, or maybe you did own a home, but you haven't been on a deed and owned it in the last three years. Or if we have any veterans on the call, if you're a veteran and you're using your VA entitlement, your VA exemption with us, for the very first time, we consider you a first time home buyer. Or Malcolm and his staff will look to see one last thing. If you're purchasing a property in a targeted area, the state of Maryland has areas throughout the whole state and targeted areas are where we want people to move in to help revitalize the communities. 
So if the lender can determine that you are not a first time home buyer, but maybe you've met one of those four, A, B, C, or D, you're a first time home buyer. You get lower rates as a first time advantage and you have a larger selection of products. There are six eligibility guidelines that you have to qualify for and the lender will determine. So you're meeting FHA, VA, USDA, and conventional guidelines, but then you're also making sure, are you a first time home buyer? making sure you don't exceed our household income, making sure you don't exceed our assets, completing home buyer education, the DTI, debt to income ratio that Malcolm mentioned, and the credit score. I'll tell you right off the bat, your credit score in order to apply for the Maryland Mortgage Program should be at least 640 or higher. If you really want to make sure you're good, have it be at 680 or higher. Or if you really want to be able to take advantage of any of our products, if you can be at a 720 or higher, you're in like Flynn, right? You're good. So that's from a credit score standpoint. We have products that are at, look at these rates. If you don't need any money from us, we don't charge you any fees to apply. We don't charge you any fees in order to do a Maryland mortgage program loan. We're a state agency. This is a product called the First Time Advantage Direct. These are the rates for conventional, Fannie or Freddie. Government is FHA, VA, USDA. It's the lowest rate on our rate sheet. And this, pro this program right here is winner, winner, chicken dinner. A lot of people are coming and using this First Time Advantage Direct because maybe they don't need any money from us for down payment. Maybe they saved money. Maybe they got a gift. Maybe they tapped into money that's available in the city or county where they're interested in purchasing. Or if you do need money, our programs offer you money to help you with down payment and or closing cost. So if you're military, you don't need down payment, but you can use all of the money that we're giving you to use it towards closing cost. Or you can use it for down payment and or closing cost. All of our loans are fixed 30. And let's say we're at a 97% LTV. So if we're giving you $6,000, that's $6,000 to help you with your down payment and closing cost. It is recorded as a second mortgage. There's no interest rate on that second and you don't have to make any monthly payments, but you do have to pay it back when you sell or refinance. So like Malcolm was mentioning, in two years, maybe sooner, let's pray, hopefully the rates will go down sooner, you can refinance out of us. You're not required to stay in any of these standard programs for any designated amount of time. So if the rates go down and you decide next year, hey, I want to refinance out of the Maryland Mortgage Program and get a better rate, you have to pay off your first mortgage and you'd have to pay back the six grand. Or you could get 3% of the total first mortgage round down no change. That could be more money than six grand or 4% or 5%. Come on, you're talking about 100% financing. You won't even have to bring your checkbook to closing. We're filling the gap so that you don't have to stress out about making sure, oh my God, I don't have enough money. We are offering this gap. We're bringing the pocketbook. We're bringing the checkbook and giving you the funds and you can borrow the money at no interest rate no monthly payments, but when you sell or refi, you have to pay it back. We also have a product called the Home Start, where we'll give you 6% of your total first mortgage. And again, the lender will determine that you qualify for all these programs, especially the six guidelines that I went over with you. If I have anyone on the call that's interested in purchasing in Montgomery County, Maryland, Montgomery County has two initiatives. If you're a Montgomery County employee, definitely ask Malcolm's team, hey, I want to purchase in Montgomery County, Maryland. I work for a Montgomery County agency. I want to make sure I qualify for the Maryland Mortgage Program for the Montgomery Employee Down Payment Assistance Loan Program. And guess what? These are the rates for your first mortgage and you'll get down payment assistance for $25,000. Where can you borrow money and not pay interest and not make payments? It doesn't accrue interest. So whether you sell or refi five years from now, a year from now, 10 years from now, it's still just 25000 
it's not going to grow. There's just a regular Montgomery County program where you don't have to work for any particular agency. But again, this comes out to 40% of your borrower's qualifying income, up to 25,000 is the max. If you're interested in buying in Prince George's County, Prince George's County has a program in the city of Greenbelt. You have to buy in the city of Greenbelt. You have to show that you've been renting there for the last 12 consecutive months, and they'll give you $15,000 of free FREE money. Then we have the Maryland Smart Buy. If anyone on this call knows anyone, or it's you yourself that has student loan debt, this we are the only state in the world <laughs> that offers this Maryland Smart Buy. We will help you purchase a home. You don't have to take down payment if you don't want to, but if you need down payment, you can choose $6,000 or Malcolm and his team will see if you qualify for the 6%, and we will help you pay off your student loan debt. Currently right now, with this program, you have to stay in the Maryland Smart Buy for five years. This is the only one we have a required time. If you stay in this product for five years, the portion of the student loan that we paid off it's 15% of the purchase price up to a maximum of $20,000 that we will pay off. When you walk away from the closing table, all of that student loan debt, all of your student loan debt has to be paid off. If you stay in the product for five years, at the end of the five years, that unsecured promissory note that we paid off your student loan debt disappears. It's forgiven. I know I don't have a lot of time, it's 7.32, but you don't apply directly with us. We are a state agency. You could reach out to Malcolm at Sandy Springs Bank. You can look and again, go back to the home page and see uh, if you want to work with any other lender in particular, but we've got Malcolm and Sandy Springs Bank on here and they're one of our top performing lenders. Definitely apply, ask as many questions as you need to and know that the state of Maryland is helping you provide yourself with money, down payment money. So don't feel like, oh, if I qualify, but I don't have enough money saved, I can't buy right now. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you fill that gap. Um, again, the website is www.mmp.marylandmarylandland.gov. And you can go right on to interest rates here on the home page, Or again, you can scroll down and click on talk to a lender. But you've got Malcolm on here. And I don't know if there's any questions that anybody needs to ask. Um, but thank you so much for spending the time. Um, it's a beautiful evening. But like Lisa said, you guys definitely are very serious about your home buying experience. And you've got some amazing partners on this call. So thank you and good luck with house hunting. Catherine, thank you so much. Um, really, really great products that everybody can take advantage of. We did have a couple of questions if our panelists don't mind um, sticking around. Catherine, since you're up, um, where can they find an approved list of lenders um, for the Maryland Mortgage Program? Mm -hmm. When you're on our website, there's a white search box up on the top left. You can type in there, find an approved MMP lender. It will bring you to the page and it will give you a printable list of all of the lenders. Um, we have about 138 lenders and they're all amazing, but I've been here with this agency for 15 years. And I will tell you that with all of these presentations, the lenders that we have doing these presentations are our top lenders. So Malcolm has an amazing staff. We're on speed dial all the time. They, his staff can call me on my personal phone and say, hey, Kath, I got a question. We work very well as a partnership. So um, certainly feel free to use any of the lenders, but um, Malcolm's team goes all over the state of Maryland. Wonderful. Thank you. And then one question is, you know, sometimes we have folks that, you know, maybe don't have a whole lot of income. Um, yeah. You know, are there still loan programs for them? It, it probably depends where they're looking to buy. 
um, as in terms of you know what the minimum income might be that they need to qualify in a certain part um, of Maryland. Fair, Catherine Malcolm. Yeah, I mean, I'll just say, and then I'll pass it to Malcolm. But with the state of Maryland Department of Housing, we're really looking at the fact that you don't make too much money, or that you don't have too much assets. Because if you make a lot of money and you've got a lot of cash, you don't need to come to the state. So we're helping people that you know need the product. Malcolm can answer to better where you know it's the income is the income, and it's all about qualifying for the price of your home. But go ahead, Malcolm. Yeah, no, great answer. And, and you know, obviously, um, ge different geographies have different programs. You know, for yeah. instance, you know, Jim with Freddie Mac, they've got a great program where uh, if you're below 50 percent of the adjusted median income for a, a census tract, you can get a twenty five hundred dollar additional grant. Um, what, what I would say is that there are also a lot of programs that allow for co-borrowers and um, non-occupant co-borrowers. So if you have a family member who's not gonna live with you, but who could help quali you qualify for a loan, you know, that's a, a very, popular, um, uh, very popular strategy for first-time buyers. Particularly, you know, we in the housing industry are seeing an incredible influx of multi-generational households. Yes. Um, and, and we see multi-generational borrowers where, in fact, we, we even had a case last week where we had uh, three generations on the loan, wow. um, which is pretty neat. So mm -hmm. so uh, you'd be surprised at how many um, family members help uh, co-sign co for um, their children or parents, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, listen, all of you have been a wonderful panel and we've had a wonderful audience with really good questions tonight thank you all so much for being here we really do appreciate it hope that you will check out the resources um, that we have provided you from the maryland mortgage program from freddie mac uh, from janielle and century 21 and from malcolm and sandy spring bank um thank you all best of luck on your home search and uh, we hope to hear from you again soon. Have a great evening. Bye. Good night. Bye, night everyone. Bye. Have a great evening as well.